The first slide is obviously our forward-looking statement. So uh, obviously you've seen plenty of these um, and also our competent persons report. A competent person for this project is uh, Mr. Nigel Maund, who is a consulting economic geologist to EMU who has extensive experience in this area, um, particularly um, uh, to do with uh, porphyry copper systems. Uh, he's done a lot of work with. The Georgetown project um, is a is a project that we're farming into with uh, Rugby Resources, a TSX listed company. Um, the project itself is in far north Queensland, it, uh, and the prospect that we're going to be talking about today is the Fiery Creek Copper Prospect, which sits on a 29 square kilometer Yataga granitoid intrusive complex. It's a highly unusual system, um, as you'll discover today as I go through it. Uh, it's identified, we think, as a massive uh, scale constrained copper porphyry system. And EMU will be targeting millions of tonnes of contained copper in what we think is a pencil porphyry style cadia type system. You'll see more about that as we progress. The Georgetown area itself, uh, we have um, three tenements in the area. Um, and representing about 850 square kilometres. And I've got my laser pointer here. This is the northern tenement we call Fiery Creek. The area that I'm going to be concentrating on today is this area here. I know it's small, but you can see that those red areas there are the highlighted areas. This is the main Georgetown tenement, which is situated over the Georgetown town itself, which was subject to gold rush at the turn of the century, where about 3,000 miners for five or six years made their fortunes or made their losses. And we have this southern area here, which we're looking at a couple of projects or prospects down here that have been uh, previously examined in, in the history. Um, we've got Munitions Creek and Snake Creek uh, prospects down there. Uh, there's over a thousand mines, prospects and mineral occurrences throughout the Georgetown district. Um, it's a very unexplored area. I know we've heard that before, but this is a very unexplored area. No modern exploration really uh, over the last 40 to 50 years. Been significant gold production uh, and very, as I say, very little systematic modern exploration. All sorts of minerals and metals here, uh, gold, lithium, silver, lead, zinc, copper, tin, tantalum, niobium, uranium, fluorine and molybdenite. There's, there's probably plenty more. There's been a number of papers done by uh, Queensland um, government uh, and, and others that have investigated the potential for a number of different minerals. We have identified so far uh, up to eight scale prospects, um, looking mainly at the copper, gold, silver, lead um, elements. The Fiery Creek Prospect. We uh, did some exploration, and this is an aeromagnetic um, uh, that shows clearly the Yataga igneous complex or granitoid complex, which is the 29 square kilometre. Uh, large granite feature that sits on this map. It sticks out uh, very clearly in the aromatics, aeromagnetics. And we've got here, these green dots illustrate the samples that we've taken from outcropping veins at Fiery Creek. And we've received from that, we've received assay results up to 23% copper and 14 ounces of silver. They're phenomenal results, even from outcropping um, rock samples in, in, in what we see as quartz breccia hosted veins. The area that we that we found that was outcropping is, is quite extensive, uh, around about one and a half kilometres or 1600 metres by 750 metres wide. And some of the veins are up to two metres wide. We've got a team up there at the moment and um, it looks like uh, the alteration that's within the area uh, strengthens our, our argument that uh, this is interpreted to be a shallow constrained scaled copper system. Uh, there's extensive uh, copper mineralization. I'll show you some rock shortly uh, at surface. Uh, and uh, the multi-element assays that we've done point to uh, a, a really interesting polymetallic copper system. The pathfinder elements are, are widespread and we have so far completed two geochemistry ground surveys uh, with uh, rock termite uh, stream sediment sampling. And we've got the third one in process at the moment. The, this is the real story behind Fiery Creek Copper. It has a, a granodiorite um, overlaying the top of what we think is a pencil porphyry uh, or a number of nested pencil porphyries. 
It's a massive, brittle, and very unreactive host. And we've identified it through our macro uh, petro work that we are in a system that has been eroded quite considerably down to the top of what we see as the cupola or, or, the, or the pencil copper mineralized pencil porphyry system here. So where we're finding those veins is outcropping just above what we see is in the philic zone. So this is a great place to be economically. If this deposit uh, ends up being economic, it'll be because we are so close to the main contained metal uh, or copper metal area of this um, porphyry system. So we, given the, the strength of the copper in the veins, we believe we're on a high grade polymetallic uh, quartz dominated um, that, have, that have fractured through this uh, host, this granite host that overlies the Yataga granitoid that overlies uh, this, this um, porphyry system. Um, as I say, it, it's a dike-like system. These things are tense, uh, they're called pencil porphyries because they actually look like pencils. They're thin and long, and they're similar to what we find in the Lachlan Fold Belt in New South Wales, particularly Cadia and places like that. There are a number of these on the east coast of, of Australia that have really been just given cursory looks, uh, and uh, there's a number of discoveries we think that can be made in the future. So we think, um, for those technically, we think we're right into the uh, philic zone, uh, alteration zone, um, which is about 100 to 200 metres above the, above the cupola. This is a, a bit of a, um, a wild map, but it's, it's a gravity. Basically, the black and white represents the, the gravity uh, of the area. And the real picture here is the structural setting. So this round circle represents the granitoid Fiery Creek area. Um, down here is Mount Turner, which is an identified porphyry system in the 70s was discovered. I'll talk a little bit more about that. More in uranium sits right on their boundary here. Um, this is all these, all of these deposits uh, give us great confidence the, of the type of mineralization that we've got at Fiery Creek. But the structural setting essentially is through these dectral settings here. Um, we've got this, this corridor setting here, this corridor through here, and then this north-south corridor, which is represented by what's known as the Delaney Fault, which was the subject, I guess, of the gold discoveries around Georgetown. So most of the gold um, is around this area here and, and associated with this structural setting of the Delaney Fault. So absolutely perfect structural settings for what we think we've found at Fiery Creek. Here's an example of the, the type of rock that we're finding alongside the veins or, or between the veins. This one here shows a, a remnant uh, feldspar porphyry. There's a lot of um, <clears throat> vugs in there, the vugs being the holes. Uh, acid sulfate leached out feldspars is how we're interpreting these vugs um, and with advanced argillic alteration. So this is giving us, uh, th particularly the, the this type of rock we're seeing pretty much throughout the, the area where these uh, high grade veins are turning. This is the, the where this sample has come from. It's come from the eastern margins of the outcropping veins. These little green dots represent some of our rock samples. And, and this is the area that we've been focusing on for the uh, copper discovery. There is further <clears throat> work and, and indications that this, this system continues throughout the whole of this granitoid um, complex and that there may well be a number of nested systems uh, um, underneath uh, that have been constrained and contained uh, in this granitoid host. <clears throat> Here's some uh, examples of the of uh, the Fiery Creek veins that we've found. You can see <clears throat> on these samples, this sample particularly shows a number of druzy cavities. These are the holes that you see in the rock here, and those have been infilled uh, by crystal crystals um, um, and, and this is a really good indicator of, of the type of overprinting we're getting. So there's been a number, of, we think, of, of uh, events that have mineralized this system. The, the rock on the right is a really interesting um, uh, sample. It shows um, these gray masses, which, which um, comprise semi-massive supergene sulfide mineralization with secondary copper mineralization around it. Uh, so really interesting rocks. This is very common throughout the whole area um, that we're looking at. All of the veins look like this. Um, I know that these have been sampled specifically 
but uh, incredibly exciting. And as I mentioned, you know, I think this one here, this sample here was the, the 23 gram, uh, sorry, the 23% copper and 460 gram silver sample. I'll put this slide up because it, it, it just gives an explanation on how these nested uh, porphyry um, pencil dike systems work. Uh, this is uh, the Endeavour porphyry system at North Parks in New South Wales. You can see these round circular um, mining uh, open pits and these different um, numbers represent, I think, uh, other nested porphyries. So the kind of system we're looking at could be quite similar to this, where we've got these pencil porphyries that are almost at surface level and certainly we've got mineralisation to surface. So it may well one day be something like this. The Georgetown project um, is, a, is an interesting one because not many people would associate uh, um, the porphyry systems uh, straight off um, with Georgetown. Um, these are the largest uh, copper molly um, systems in the world where these stars are on the, on the western side of the Americas. Um, the the grey lines represent uh, obviously places where there's been discoveries and of copper moly systems. And interestingly enough, it has been tracked into uh, this east coast of Queensland and up the north uh, of uh, the New South Wales coast. So we're in the we're in the game with these. Mount Turner is 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 a identified copy system. Um, this one, this is a caldera. Um, it's shown on a on a Google Maps, and this is our Fiery Creek tenement here. With where my laser pointer is now is where Fiery Creek is. So about fifteen kilometres away in that structural zone through here. Um, it, this is a, an interesting um, analog to Fiery Creek. It was last explored in the nineteen seventies. It's a it's a mineralised system with a multiple phase of dikes, stocks, and breccia. It's an unconstrained system as opposed to Fiery Creek. We believe that this, this system has vented. <clears throat> so the volatiles and metals have been vented uh, and therefore it didn't show um, significant mineralization at surface. It's quite possible that given it's, it's, it hasn't eroded uh, like Fiery Creek has, that maybe a kilometer below surface, we may well find that this has a mineralized, um, <clears throat> mineralized porphyry system as well. <clears throat> so the comparisons are really that Mount Turner um, gives us confidence that we're in the porphyry district and it gives us um, confidence that Fiery Creek has eroded to a level which is potentially economic in terms of its mineralization. <clears throat> this is, <clears throat> excuse me. This is a, a busy slide, but um, it, this we're talking about what we're doing at the moment up there. I've got two teams in the field um, and we'll be carrying out some um, more geochemistry and that will collect potentially around two and a half thousand samples and we'll be doing uh, multi-element uh, assays on those, a 61 suite multi-element assays. Following that, we've got a geophysics program uh, that we're going to run over the Fiery Creek area or that area of discovery. Uh, around about 20 kilometres of pole dipole IP resistivity and MT geophysics. So we should see, we are confident and hopeful that we're going to have, we're going to be able to light up um, what's below surface um, that we can see on, over the granite. These, um, this is the Fiery Creek area where the outcropping veins have been discovered in that green shade area. The blue ring structures have been identified from topographical maps showing potential uh, mineralization plumes. That was mapped by one of our geologists. The little black crosses represent sample areas and the black lines across here are what we're proposing to be the geophysics lines that we'll be running. This is a very in a inhospitable area. It's difficult to transverse uh, and, um, and possibly that's the reason that no one's been across here or we don't think anyone's done any work, modern work for, for years in the area. We're looking at um, some soil sampling here, more intense soil sampling between the veins where we think we've got alteration. And we may also be running an XRF heat map as well, which will give us instant feedback on, on where, what we're looking for. A drill program will be prepared following this work. And we're hopeful that we can be drilling as soon as possible, but given the um, access and weather uh, or the wet seasons there and the, the time it will take to put all this together, we're probably looking early 2025. 
the gold prospectivity at Georgetown is is what it's known for. And this this wonderful sample um, was found uh, near Camp Oven Creek. Um, we've had uh, gold measured historically up to 224 grams per tonne, so epithermal bonanza style gold. This is a six gram nugget. It's a high aspect ratio nugget indicating that it is a bonanza epithermal gold uh, at its source. Um, this specky, as I said, was taken from Camp Oven, which is uh, about six kilometres away from Fiery Creek. I didn't want to dwell too much on the gold story at Georgetown, although it is significant. Our focus is on Fiery Creek, but you can see from some of those, um, uh, some of the work in, in that slide that there's been significant gold found in the area in over the three tenement areas. So that uh, we think that obviously this is epithermally veining within um, within uh, a porphyry system or, or, or a large area of porphyry porphyry. So that um, this is quite understandable. It's it, we will be working on these prospects once we once we get uh, the priority prospect of Fiery Creek uh, work done. So why Georgetown? Um, well, right now. It's because Fiery Creek is potentially emerging as one of Australia's most significant porphyry discoveries. Um, there's substantial gold mineralisation throughout the whole of our project areas, and we've got the extensive base metal endowment, um, which has been uh, historically determined. So um, this is an area that we're seeing uh, others um, that have moved into, some bigger players, FMG, Rio and Gold Road, um, are in the area. Um, I think people are starting to realise that this has been unexplored. It's not your typical Queensland um, small show, um, in, and that's what we're looking to prove with, with our Fiery Creek system. Um, so it, it is a really highly exciting area, and uh, it, it's, it's very, very strongly minerally endowed. So we're expecting some really good news flow in the next, um, next six months or so as we develop uh, our programs and complete our programs. Um, we, we're looking forward to bringing the results of our uh, our soils and um, our geochemistry work, our results of our geophysics, the planning of our drilling program, and the and eventually to get the drills on the ground. Uh, I have a picture here, and it's been sitting in the background for me. I hadn't spoken about that. The reason I put the, the volcano on the back, I kind of see that this. Uh, we believe that the age of uh, Fiery Creek is is similar to that of Mount Lashon, um, Mount Turner nearby. Um, Red Dome and Kidston, which isn't far away, about 70 kilometres away. And uh, we believe that uh, this Permio-Carboniferous carboniferous, uh, era um, was, was quite substantial for the development of these porphyry systems. And um, this is Mayon, Mount Mayon in um, the Philippines, which is regarded as the world's most perfect volcano, it said. Uh, so thank you very much for the presentation. We hope to bring you news and uh, perhaps in this forum, uh, webinars um, as we as we progress our our story and we're we're looking forward to your support and looking forward to bring you some really encouraging news over the next short while great thank you doug for that uh great presentation uh, i think uh, you've really highlighted why georgetown is is emerging into a fascinating prospect and and what a time to be exploring for for commodities like uh, copper silver and and gold for that matter uh, so we'll move into the Q&A session now. Firstly, a reminder to all our viewers, um, if you would like to ask a, a question of the, the company, please do so in the Q&A panel within Zoom. We do have a few questions, which I, I can get started on uh, for, for you, Doug. The first one being, uh, you mentioned that uh, drilling was scheduled for early uh, next year. Um, could could EMU accelerate activities and potentially start drilling any earlier than that? Yeah, I, I'd love to be able to, Ben. Um, you know, we could go and swing the rigs in there tomorrow, but unfortunately, um, we'd probably be wasting shareholders' money. Um, we we have to we have to be comprehensive and systematic in how we 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 spend our dollars in the ground, and uh, to do that, we've got to put the vectors in. So that takes the the work in the, the geophysics and geochem to be done, and more than that, we've got to we've got to go through the administrative procedures to get accesses and things like that, which we don't foresee any issues at this point in time, but uh, those things do take a little bit of time these days, and uh, so we. We um, are careful in what we say, but I think that uh, following the wet season uh, in March next year, if we don't have too bad a wet, we should be on the ground. 
Sure, thanks, Doug. Uh, so the next question, you, you did mention uh, the farming agreement with uh, rugby, of course. Uh, can you please outline the, the, the terms of that, that farming for, for our yeah. listeners? I'll, I'll do it. Um, it. I'll summarize it very briefly. Um, yeah. we're, it's a, it's a five-year farming of which we earn 50% after three years for a minimal amount of expenditure. And then, um, and then I think the, after five years, the total expenditure is about 1.8 million in expenditure in the ground. And uh, that leads then to a joint venture of which um, rugby have twenty uh, percent, and we and EMU have eighty percent. Sure. Okay. Thank you for that. And and you did mention that uh, that, that the project has been overlooked for for some time now. Um, and you did touch on on why why you think this is. But can you go into more detail on why why you think uh, it's been held back and and there hasn't been further exploration work uh, to date on on, on Georgetown. Yeah, sure. Look, with Fiery Creek specifically, there is absolutely nothing that we've found historically uh, yeah. on the mineralisation there. The the There's an area to the north which my geologist went to um, and there were some old workings there that maybe we were scratched around for gold because gold was the target around Georgetown. Um, copper, uh, I'm not sure, came onto anyone's radar. But... Um, that said, um, the the geologists followed the the, the veining system um, through some, as I said, inhospitable country, and um, it, it opened up for them into what we've discovered at Fiery Creek. But I think hand on heart, I don't think too many people have been through this country and even imagine that you have a porphyry system constrained under a granitoid. Sure. Okay. And, and I think you've, you've probably answered this question with the focus of your presentation, but will you be basing your exploration efforts uh, out of Queensland or, or WA? What's, what, hmm. what do you plan to uh, do there? It's early days, but um, you would have to, um, we'll, 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 we'll go where we need to be. So if we need to establish ourselves at Georgetown, um, we will be doing that. It's a great place to establish. So I don't think there'll be any issues from anyone. Um, to be there. Um, but at the moment, we obviously, it's all about uh, uh, being financially obsessive and how we can uh, best use our dollars. Um, we've got uh, the, the, the teams in the field at the moment. But yeah, as we progress this project and if it develops the way we think it will, I'm sure we'll have teams um, established on site. Okay, great. Uh, the next question, we, we have one on uh, Nigel. So, so Nigel has an industry best uh, pedigree for this type of exploration. Uh, will he stay engaged uh, with the company throughout the, the exploration process? Yeah, Nigel's been a, a great consultant for, for EMU and um, giving us, he gave us advice uh, on, on other projects as well. So we've known Nigel for some time and uh, his advice has been uh, superb for this project and uh, his, his hypothesis has led us to who uh, fast track our exploration in the area. So yes, he will be a part of the team uh, as long as I can keep him there. Great, oh, that sounds good. He, he's done a great job so far. And also in terms of some of the, the new uh, exploration uh, techniques, uh, which Amy will apply to, to Georgetown, uh, which of those in particular do you think will be used and, and, and uh, will make Georgetown a more attractive prospect today than it has been in the past? Well, I think the, the, the geochemistry we've we've had a really good handle on. Uh, Nigel particularly has give, given us a lot of that with his petro studies. I mean, Nigel's uh, got a chemistry background as well as a geologist and, and many decades in it. So um, our geochemistry has been, I think, really good work. Um, but the geophysics will will give us a lot more. Um, the, the, the exercise we're running uh, is a comprehensive geophysics survey and uh, the use of MT particularly, um, potentially, if we, we switch that on, will give us really good visibility on targets on our vectors for drilling. So geophysics will, will be a, a absolute light of this next few months. Brilliant. Uh, thank you for that answer, Doug. Uh, that, we've got time for a couple more. Uh, the next one, what is the significance of a, a caldera geological setting at uh, Mount, Tur Mount Turner? Uh, look, it's, it's really, it's for us, it's proof of concept that we're in a porphyry area, I think more than more than anything. Uh, and, and the volcanics uh, have given us, um, uh, volcanics and, and what's happened um, with our reading around the Mount Turner discovery, which was made, as I say, in around about in the 1970s. Um, it sits on a structural corridor, um, we think, um, that, that facilitates the these um, porphyry intrusive that, that we've found at uh, Fiery Creek. Sure. Okay. And 
Uh, Georgetown isn't EMU's only project. Uh, so, so what are the what are EMU's plans for the rest of the projects in its uh, portfolio? Well, we're we're a small company. We're limited in funds. Our focus is Fiery Creek, and then extend yep. uh, through to some highly prospective gold projects or prospects at Georgetown. We also hold the uh, Badger project at Yalgoo in Western Australia, which is um, which we've done quite a bit of work in the last few years. Uh, gold. Uh, copper, oh, sorry, gold, tungsten, and uh, we've found lithium there as well. Um, that at the moment, um, we're, we're looking at um, strategies on that project, and we do hold the Sunfire project, which is stalled, awaiting uh, government um, confidence on whether we can uh, advance that project to drill in the southwest of Western Australia. Great projects, all of them, but uh, our focus is for Ori Creek at Georgetown. Sure. Okay. So that's all the questions we have time for today. Uh, if, if there are further questions, the, the, the company will uh, respond directly. Uh, so, so please make contact with those. Uh, otherwise, thank you everybody for joining us today. I, I will pass back to Doug for, for any closing remarks that which you might have, Doug. Thank you, Ben. And uh, thanks for everyone for listening. Um, this is, our, as I say, this is our first webinar. I'd like to bring more of these to the, to the marketplace as we develop our project. Um, uh, thank you for your support and thank you for listening today. Excellent. Thank you, Doug. And thank you again for everybody joining us for today for the webinar. There will be a replay of the webinar posted out to all of the uh, company's followers and subscribers and so forth. So please look out for that one. Thank you again.